Hello everyone, this is Devin Adams, uh, once again, a Fortinet Certified Trainer here in Tepe, Arizona, and this is going to be my first official video of authenticating with the FortiGate. So, uh, as mentioned in my introduction video, we're going to start with local authentication, and we're just going to jump right into it. So, let me load up my, uh, my management PC here. Alright, so I forgot, I forgot I actually have a domain controller that we made in our demo lab. Uh, what is your login here, Bill? There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and load up the FortiGate here. So let me load up Internet Explorer. And I believe the password, not the password, let's see here. Where is that FortiGate located? New updates. Oh, that was so funny. By the way, my last video I uh, <laughs> went to join this thing to the domain and uh, yeah I had like three days worth of updates to do alright here we go so it's gonna be 254 alright so here is the FortiGate and our whole goal of the whole series is to essentially get users to be recognized in the FortiGate right either for monitoring purposes or for uh, giving specific access control um, based off of someone's job role, right, least privilege, all that good good best practices. So um, so just right off the bat, there's a couple of different flavors of authenticating with the FortiGate, right? And, and the one I want to focus on here is remote versus local. Now what are we talking about? Local authentication means that the FortiGate itself is storing the users and their passwords, all right? Remote authentication simply means that the FortiGate is acting as a client and it's going to use some other uh, server like a, an Active Directory or maybe a Radius server, right, to get the credentials, all right? So I'm going to start with the most basic one, which is local, and I'm going to just show how this works by uh, going to our system and going to administrators. So uh, the first administrator account that's created on the FortiGate is just admin. I mean, admin's not anyone. It's just kind of like the, the super user account, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say create new. And I'm going to make this admin, Devin, that's me by the way, ha 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 ha. And you see how I have to actually put the password directly here, all right? So I'll just say the FortiMan Anyways, people are going to think that's a 40 metropolitan area network. No, I'm just kidding. So here we go. Local user, remote servers, or match all users in a remote server group. Now, we're going to talk more about that when we get into remotes. But right now, I'm just going to store this right locally on the FortiGate. Okay? And I'm going to say, uh, all right, I don't have VDOM, so I'll say super admin. I'm going to hit OK. Ta-da! Right? And so what's nice about this is at least there's some accountability, okay, of, of who's logging in and changing what. Because um, best practice di dictates, see, we cannot even edit that admin name. We can change the password, but we can't edit it, all right? I, I don't use that account. I mean, the first thing you should do when, when you uh, get the FortiGate is to make that a super long secure password and stop using the admin account and then all the individual admins have their own logins right so um, but what actually happened there where is that password where is it being stored guys locally on the FortiGate right so uh, for example here if I go to my um, dashboard yes I know your trial version and I have a whole entire video series of setting up a, a lab environment I have 13 days to use this machine before it expires. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and back up the config file. Okay. And I'll do it in plain text. I won't encrypt it. All right. We'll hit save. And then we'll open. All right. And we'll just use like a notepad or something here. Okay. So this is the running configuration of my FortiGate. So I'm going to just do a real quick uh, control find for my name. There he is. All right, and there it is. Oh my gosh, wait a second. My password wasn't that long and complex. I only did a password a password. I did like the crappiest password ever. What are we seeing here, guys? We're seeing a hashed flavor 
of that password. So even though the FortiGate is storing it, it's not storing it in the plain text, and they do get backed up when you back up your configuration files. And if someone just opened this up, right, and took a look at this, they wouldn't know what my password was. So there you guys go. Local authentication stores the password directly in the running configuration of the FortiGate. What? Okay, so not a big deal there. All right. Um, so let me go ahead and log out. And now I'm going to log in as Devin. All right. Yes, I know. My VM powered down. After I lectured in the last videos, don't ever just shut down your machines. Um, I left the, the laptop unplugged. And anyways, uh, it's yelling at me to, to do something there. So, all right, here we go. Okay, so no big deal. Now I'm Devin. All right. And, uh, you know, when it's doing event logging and things like that now, I mean, at least we'll be able to have some kind of accountability of like who's logging in, uh, so on and so forth. Um, yeah. So see there, Devin, 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 Devin. I mean, it's, it's adding some level of accountability here. All right, guys. And then you can go back and actually see, right, um, you know, who came in and changed what right there in the event logs. So, uh, but let's take this a step further, okay? And let's actually create users and groups. So I'm gonna pop over to my firewall policy and objects. And you guys are gonna see, uh, I have a firewall policy, very generic, to allow internet access. So, um, but all I am doing here is matching for my source an IP address. Well, there's no name to that, all right? So what I can do here is that I can go to my user and devices, and I can go to my user definitions and I'll say okay um, I'll create a new one and I will just uh, make up a name here see how we have all these different settings I'll say local user I'll call this Frank give Frank a password all right and we just created a user on the FortiGate just like our admin I'm going to do another one that says, uh, let's see, Frank. I'll call him Beans, Frank and Beans. Is that dumb, guys? Whatever. Um, here we go. There we go. So we have Frank and Beans, okay? Now, you probably don't want to reference individual people on the firewall unless they're very, very special. So I'm going to make two groups. And one of the groups I'm going to call, I don't know, and, and the thing about user groups here too, guys, the user groups are stored locally also. All right, so I'm going to call this, um, I don't know, um, <laughs> users. How clever is that? And I'll put Frank a, a part of that group. Okay. I'll say all right. And you can now see that Frank, there's, oh, there he is. There's one member of this group, and it's Frank. Okay. and But I'm going to be... Uh, making another user group and I'll just call it a uh, a pinger <laughs> I don't know and I'll put beans in there okay and uh, trust me this will make sense in, in a moment all right so uh, we have one user group called called uh, pinger and another one just called normal users all right so and this actually transitions us into this concept of active authentication now active authentication is where the user is going to be prompted for authenticating and it's very evident that we're doing it on the FortiGate in other words you know it throws up a big log log in whenever uh, they try to access the web so so let's go ahead and go to our firewall policy and objects now IP4 policy right and this general access, you know what? Our users can use it. That's cool. That's fine. So I'm going to go over to user, and I'm going to throw in my uh, my user group users. All right. Very original, Devin. Okay. But I'm also going to make another firewall policy real quickly, identical except for a couple of key differences here. So I'll call this the, the pinger, <laughs> the pinger firewall policy. Okay. So we're going out the LAN, out to the WAN. The source is going to be our local subnet, but also just the pinger group, okay? Our destination, well, the internet's a big place, but for the services, 
all that group will be able to do is, yeah, ping. How boring is that, right? How boring is that? Sure. So here we go. All right. So almost identical in the sense of these matches up here. The only thing that's different is, is the services, right? So when traffic hits the firewall, it, it doesn't know who is in what group until they authenticate. So uh, if it's Frank, it'll go ahead and let them him surf the web just like he, he wants to. If it's Beans, uh, he should only be able to ping out. I mean, that's the only protocol we're allowing here. So, But it's going to be active. Should we try it, guys? Why not? So here we go. Let's go to a website that we've never been before. Uh, let's see here. There's a problem with your certificate. What? What are they talking about? What? Okay, so <laughs> um, and uh, certificates are going to be a completely different uh, story here. But look, guys, we were prompted for credentials. Okay. What? Now, guys, by the way, I'm just going to interject a little public service announcement. Fortinet has your money. You bought their products, right? Don't don't be advertising for them if you don't want to. Okay? Customize this. Customize this page. All right? Because you'll get people to be like, a Fortinet? What's a Fortinet? All right? Whatever. So here we go. So Frank and his password. And, of course, it's going through HTTPS because we want to secure those credentials as they travel through and now that he's been authenticated look at that good times right he's he's now doing everything but working because that's what our end users will do half of the time all right so i'm just kidding all right so blah 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 okay so but now back on the fortigate all right Beyond just having a user now or an IP address now, if I go to like my FortiView and I look at my, my sources, okay, I mean, who am I seeing here? Yeah, that's right. I'm seeing Frank. Yeah, isn't that cool? And then turn on a little device detection too. And now you have a, a PC also. All right, guys, not too bad. So there you go. There's a whole nother level of of uh, uh, accountability there. Hey, Frank, what were you doing looking up Sandra Bullock when you should have been working? Oh, it wasn't me, dart. Oh, so someone stole your password and got onto your machine, huh? Hmm. Anyways, but let's go ahead and kick Frank off. So if we go to users and devices now, and we go to you, nope. Oh, man, they changed that in 5.2. Okay, I forget they, they now put all the monitors in one group starting with 5.4. You think I get used to that now, but here we go. Uh, firewall users, and Frank has been authenticated, but now I'm going to kick him off. <laughs> get out of here, Frank. Oh, there we go. No one wants your business. So he's gone. He's kicked off, right? So, you know, we go and we click on a new ad or something like, oh my gosh, we have a problem. All right. We'll continue the site. Ah, log in, but now we're going to do beans. Okay. So we authenticated. We didn't get a you can't authenticate, but look at that. Is my web page loading up? Right? What's going on? What's going on? Nothing. Nothing is happening. Why? Because we only gave beans what kind of access? We only gave them access to ping things. Oh, poor guy. You know, he's sitting here like, I can ping 888888, and that's about it. I wonder if he could ping Google.com, though. Um, let's see, ping Yahoo. We haven't gone to Yahoo yet. So that's another thing, guys, too. Um, there's a good chance that uh, uh, DNS traffic can get out. Just something to keep in mind. So don't, don't be weirded out by that. A lot of things require DNS. Uh, ping, I don't know, hello.com. Say out received hello.com. All right. So, um, but I mean, let's try to like Telnet. No, I don't have a Telnet client installed. Anyways, but we saw that. We saw that, right? And if we come up here now to our uh, FortiView, there we are, FortiView. 
and we look at our sources. Sorry, beans. You are just pinging, and that is it. All right, because everything else is going to drop through. So there you guys go. Uh, that was a very short demo of what creating local users, local groups, using them in firewall policies, and also monitoring users, kicking them off of the FortiGate, right? But there's a couple of problems here. There's actually a huge problem here, all right? And the problem is, do you want to know your users' passwords? Do you want even to know your admin's passwords? And the answer is no, we do not. So in the next video, we're going to show how to set up LDAP, relationship between the FortiGates, and your Active Directory Domain Services Domain Controller, right? And that way, we don't see the users. We just assign groups to the same kind of user groups. So, all right, guys, I hope that was all right. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.